Welcome back to Men and the City. Hope everybody's doing well. I'm still in Medellin, Colombia, but uh, I will be departing shortly for Argentina. So the next video you see will probably be from Buenos Aires down in South America. So in today's video, I wanted to talk about the state of men. I started this channel God, back in June of last year, time flies. I started this channel because I felt strongly, and I still do, that something was missing. That people didn't really understand what was happening with young men, men in general, to be sure, but young men in particular. And that we, not just in the West, but in the world in general, we're at a tipping point, a key inflection point. And while I felt, and I still do, that people sense that in different spaces, for example, people in the Bitcoin community are keenly aware that our financial system is melting down. Now, nobody knows precisely when the big bang per se will come, but there is a wider recognition that that's underway. Some people, perhaps not the majority, but certainly a growing minority of people recognize the same thing in the political sphere. That's why you see the emergence of things like the alt-right or the alternative media space where people realize that the mainstream media is broken and has been for decades. You see a kind of realization of the same in academia, where new professorial-like platforms and figures are emerging on the internet because there's a recognition that the legacy institutions, you know, the Ivy League schools and the four-year university track are completely broken and have been for decades. And, of course, then there's the manosphere, and the manosphere, I suppose, its genesis began about 20 years ago in the early 2000s when men in recognized increasingly that the dating market was broken or that what they've been told about how to meet a, a female, the pathway to marriage and the white picket fence as we think of it in the U.S., that that trajectory that that paradigm was breaking down and so these men many of whom were gammas or betas or whatever the hell you want to call them they, they just didn't fit into that cookie cutter way of life maybe they didn't look a certain way they didn't act a certain way whatever they realized they had to come up with different a different methodology a different approach but if you add it all up what it leads to, or what it led me to, was the realization that men were in trouble, but at the same time transforming. And they were transforming because the world was broken. The world is breaking. And at the core of that collapse, we go back to the beginning. We go back to the ancient archetypes. We go back to the fundamentals of what men and women really are. What are men and women effectively? Well, whenever I'm asked about masculinity and femininity, what I do is I emphasize the shishi. The shishi are the Buddhist lions. Sometimes they're called food dogs by people in the West, but these are lions that sit in front of Chinese palaces, uh, homes, you know, maybe palatial estates, key government buildings, etc. But one of the lions, the male, has his paw sitting atop a globe, and that symbolizes power, structure, dominance, direction, leadership. And the female, well, sitting to the left of the male, of course, under her paw is a cub, symbolizing fertility, motherhood, and reproduction. 
And that image, which defines or has defined humanity for millenniums, has broken down. And it hasn't just broken down in the West. I know some of you, when I, when I allude to a crisis of men, I'll, I'll talk about it globally, and you're focused primarily on white men in the United States, and that's understandable. But as, as it stands today, there are, we think, 70 million sexless men, basically leftover men in India, uh, some number or, or approaching that number in China. There are what's called the Shengyu in China. These are about 100 million women who were childless and single between the ages of 20 and 40. In Japan, for instance, there are these shut-ins. They call them hiki, hikikuwamari. And these are people that have basically sheltered themselves away from society. Most of them are men, but not all of them. Some of them are women. In any case, this crisis of modernity represents a dam breaking this flow of balance or energy, natural energy, between men and women, illustrated by the shishi. And as a result, women aren't reproducing, men aren't marrying, Men are divesting from society all over the world, most acutely, of course, in the West. But if you add it all up, again, what this leads to is a breakdown, which is why it's not going to continue. Putting females in the driver's seat and taking them away from their reproductive power, if you will, and strapping them into the, the piloting positions in institutions, the US military, in various ways all over the world. You know, that the growth of bureaucracies and administrative infrastructure that literally just drains humanity. And women have been used in that capacity as you might say labor-saving devices for men. Whatever the, these corporate heads can do to recruit labor, they're doing it, as we know. So all of these things sort of work together, but at the core represents, at the core rather, is this imbalance, this imbalance between the genders. And that is creating, in the minds of men, something new a resistance, a revolt, a transformation from defeat into a reorganization that I think is going to lead to victory. And nature is on our side. Nature does not reward this imbalance. It punishes nations, societies, communities, whatever that abandon these natural forces. And it creates this equilibrium, which is what we're seeing. It's what we're seeing economically. It's what we're seeing politically. It's what we're seeing in the sexual marketplace. It all adds up to the same thing. It's all leading in the same direction. And so I say this to you in part because over the last few weeks, a lot of people have talked about the, the demise or the end of the manosphere. And, you know, certainly in the mainstream press, there's been people that are all but uh, willing to slander, degrade, degenerate, <clears throat> denigrate, and attack men in the manosphere. You know, people like Andrew Tate, or Rolo Tomasi, Donald Trump, Jordan Peterson, you know, fault these men for all kinds of things. And men, by virtue of being more aggressive or dominant, we're going to make mistakes. We're going to say things that we regret. And I'm not suggesting that these men are perfect. Nobody's perfect. But they are representative of a shift in the mentality of men in favor of revolt against a broken order. 
And so the manosphere is not in a state of demise whatsoever. In fact, quite the opposite is the case. What you're going to see happen increasingly is resistance, is a doubling down on opposition. The more effort that's placed on censorship or on intimidation or shutting down men who speak the truth, it's going to backfire. It's going to boomerang. And so the manosphere, which I believe is at the epicenter of this revolt, which is really driving it, it's just this, this testosterone-driven masculine resistance to tyranny, a tyranny of imbalance, of disequilibrium, imposed upon us to some degree by the globalists and their ilk, but also by a, a natural sort of shift, a cyclical decline, a letting go of the rope by faith, by the ancient structures that have held our society together for a long time. And materialism has gnawed away at that structure, as we've discussed. But it's all coming to a head. It's coming to a head because real social problems are beginning to intensify and accelerate. And that is the cause of this revolt. This is the, the social friction that's creating an inflammation or leading to a kind of conflagration, a fire of opposition that's only going to get worse. It's only going to intensify. Now, I regard that, I regard this entire experience as completely necessary. As I've said before, conflict by virtue of us being human beings, is, is a necessary facet of what we're dealing with. And so this is coming to a head. But those against us who stand on the side, if you will, of the disequilibrium, of the imbalance, of this faux sense of modernity and progress, their institutions, the, the, the phony structures that they've built, you know, the weaponization of certain ideas, it's just not going to work. It's not going to withstand the masculine backlash that's going to calcify in political movements, in masco nationalism, as I call it, around the world. And that too explains in part a shift in the balance of power that I've talked about at length on this channel. So what is the state of men today? Well, it's, it's very precarious, it's very fragile, it's very wounded. And that tells you that we are on the cusp of something spectacular that's about to happen, of truly revolutionary times ahead. And I think we're already in that period of time, to be sure. But make no mistake, what's coming is volcanic. It's explosive. Because nature rejects the disequilibrium. Faith, you know, these ancient, embedded, instinctual tendencies inside the male psyche, inside the natural world, they're going to come back with a vengeance. And when they do, a lot of this phony structure, this uh, fragility, this uh, progressivism, wokeism, globalism, the rest of it, it's going to vaporize. It's going to be demolished by this tidal wave of a rebalancing. And men are going to lead that effort. It's our duty. It's our mission. It is the purpose of men today. And that's really what Peterson and Trump and Tate and Tomasi and people like that, it's really what they're talking about in different ways. They, they may not articulate it the way I am, but at the core of their message is that the system is broken and we must rebel against it. And that rebellion 
is only going to get stronger because the legacy system is giving way. And it's going to lash out at anybody in the short term who challenges it, which is only going to make things worse. So, the state of men is one of fragility, but it's trending in the right direction. The manosphere, the red pill, the cryptosphere, the alternative media, the rise of masco nationalism, these things are going absolutely nowhere. They're only going to get stronger in the years ahead. And all of you watching are a part of this effort. You're a part of something bigger. So don't give up now. Don't give up just before this massive volcanic eruption begins, because we're almost there. Stay tuned for more, and we'll talk soon.